Hello, I'm going to read you the story of Freddy Frog and the Forgotten Birthday. Is this about me? Yeah, it's about you when people forgot your birthday. Oh, no, they forgot my birthday? Yeah. You want to hear the story? Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. I'll go sit down. Can, can you read it to me? Yeah, I'll read it to you and anybody else who wants to listen. Great, thanks. Okay, I'm ready. All right, there we go. Freddy Frog and the Forgotten Birthday. A tale from Ferndale, story and illustrations by Lee Gillette. For Annie, Mike, and Natasha, and for Neil, thank you one and all. Freddy Frog woke up and stretched his long green arms. He yawned and was just about to go back to sleep when he remembered that today was special. It was his birthday. He sat up in bed with butterflies dancing in his stomach. Every year, his friends left him surprise presents. He looked around the room. No presents. He looked on the shelf. No presents. He looked on his bedside table. No presents. Freddy Frog crawled out of bed, had a few flies for breakfast, and tossed his pajamas onto the chair. Then he left for a long, sad walk over the hills, feeling very sorry for himself. Meanwhile, on the other side of Ferndale, Haley Hedgehog sat knitting. She looked out the window and spotted a flash of green. What is Freddy Frog doing stomping away over the hill? He looks very grumpy, Haley said to herself. And then she remembered, oh, today was Freddy Frog's birthday. She had totally forgotten. Something had to be done, and quickly, before he returned, she charged out the door and down the hill as fast as she could to the tree where Chester Chipmunk lived. She giggled as she remembered the gift that she had given Freddy Frog the year before. She had knitted him a beautiful woolen hat, but it came right down over his eyes. Anyone home? Haley called as she knocked on the door. Chester Chipmunk opened the door almost a minute she started knocking. Come in, come in, he said with a smile. I was just going to have a cup of acorn tea. Haley wasn't sure there was time, but she loved acorn tea. Oh, I would love some acorn tea, she said. What brings you to my house? It's Freddy Frog's birthday, and I completely forgot. His birthday? Oh, no, I forgot, too. Last year, I gave him a special acorn, but he didn't know what to do with it. What can we do? Chester asked. Let's go ask Mole, Haley suggested. As they came out of Chester's tree, they could see Freddy Frog walking away with his head down. They ran as fast as they could up to Max's home on the hill. <laughs> Max, Max, they shouted down into the dark hole. They heard a little shuffling noise below, and then it was quiet. Max, they shouted again a bit louder. The shuffling got closer and closer. Finally, Max the Mole popped his head up out of the hole. He blinked his eyes in the bright sunlight. What's going on up here? What is all this ruckus? It's Freddy Frog's birthday today, the two friends shouted together. Max bounced right up and out of his hole. Oh, it is. I'd completely forgotten. I don't have a present for him. We don't either, said Chester, and they both told him about their presents a year before. Well, I gave Freddy Frog a nice juicy worm, the best I could find. But he doesn't like worms, Max told them. In fact, you should have seen his face. He did say thank you, but I don't think he ate it. Haley was getting nervous. Freddy Frog might come back any minute. Hurry up. He'll be back soon, she warned them. He might like a, bo a book about frogs, Max proposed. Nice idea, but he already has a lot of books about frogs, Chester responded. A fly swatter, Haley suggested. No, he can catch them with his tongue, Chester said. They thought for a very long time. A party, Chester Chipmunk finally shouted. Yes, Haley and Max chimed in. Hurry, they all shouted at the same time. Let's have the party by the brook in front of Chester's tree. Down they ran to the brook as fast as their legs could take them. Max decorated around the tree with the beautiful fuchsia flowers tied up like lanterns. 
Haley made a delicious acorn cake with crunchy flies on top of it. And Chester set the table with acorn tops for plates. It was looking quite festive and cheery, and Haley was just taking the cake out of the oven. They were almost ready. Suddenly, they heard a splash from the brook. The three little mice had been busy gathering branches and acorns and stones for a special gift. They were working very hard. Two of them passed a branch to the third mouse to try and fill in the gap when, oh no, the little mouse lost his balance and fell right into the rushing water. Help, he cried. The two mice on the rock tried to pull their friend out, but it was wet and slippery and they slid right down into the brook with their little friend. They were traveling downstream at a fast pace, bobbing up and down in the water. Luckily, a small branch was floating along, and they managed to scramble up on top of it. And only just in time, they were very tired and couldn't swim very well. Chester ran down to the water, grabbed the mice, and pulled them out to safety. What had they been doing? Max the mole knew exactly what they had been up to. With a little help from the mice, Max pushed a big stone into place and the dam was finished. They worked hard to fill in all the little spaces where the water could get through and the pond started to fill up. And meanwhile, his friends were getting a special birthday for him. And meanwhile, Freddy Frog had been walking up and down. 